This is your daily market recap for Tuesday, May 10th, 2022. Let's go. Hey everyone, this is my channel to help investors and traders develop a probability-based mindset to succeed. Also try and keep friends informed of what's going on in the markets and the economy, and also a little real estate content as well. This is Dan Max at EXP Realty, aka The Trading Agent, and this is your daily market recap for Tuesday, May 10th, 2022. Let's get into it. Again, if you are newer to the channel, please subscribe to the Discord room, link is in the description below. If you're looking to learn how to trade and swing trade more of focus, not really day trading, but making bigger trades for bigger money versus trying to scalp out dollars or two in the market. And scalping means is a term referred to like trying to take a small amount, like a shaving a little bit off of a trade. Stop by the Discord room. There's tons of content for learning. People are here always getting educated. Yeah, and this is free. My goal is to show people how to trade. I make money from trading. I do appreciate donations from, say, PayPal or whatever, but that's not what pays the bills. This is where the education is. I put a lot of time in to help people and hopefully uh, getting a lot out of it because we've definitely been in front of the market. And when I say in front of the market, we're one step ahead. We're always looking to do the opposite as people are starting to do the wrong things, which sell lows, buy highs. Just, again, check the record, follow in, or uh, come stop by the room and guarantee you'll see that this isn't just a gambling guessing game. We're literally on top of it. And that's our goal is to be on top of the markets. And again, you don't following isn't necessarily making money. It's being able to do what the market is doing and following is fine. Once the trends are obvious, but keep in mind, the markets are very choppy. So there's not a lot of trends other than down, but we'll see what happens again. We'll get into the good stuff here shortly. Again, also too, if you're not following on Twitter, I'm, dropping every one of my trades i mean here's an example xop we talked about taking some money double bottom short term we talked about shorting up here on the outside reversal day if you can't be in the discord room check out the uh, twitter always drop in the links there too <clears throat> on that note let's get into bitcoin and bitcoin has been pretty technical i mean i have a lot of friends who are pretending like it's not and it's like look at the look at the charts y'all oh gosh here we go. It's been acting pretty technical. And one of the things that when I say technical meaning is that it's just, it is doing what it's doing. Oh, I don't, this is not my uh, Bitcoin. What is it? Bitcoin BTC $2. Where is that sucker? Here we go. Uh, not showing on that one either anyway let's just run through it i don't want to waste time i'll find it later trading views got way too many things you can clearly tell <clears throat> we've talked about the thirty thousand level holding got a hold we talked about this potentially being a left shoulder right shoulder head you had a again i'll draw it on the fly because it's not rocket science we talked about this being like the channel low it broke it of course so when thirty five thousand broke which was support we'll draw it again for everybody because this is how you learn it's 38. Where was it? Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, I'm on the weekly too. I was like, man, this looks a little different than the daily. And it was. Yeah, I hope people are appreciating a lot of this content. Like it's it's not it's not easy to stay informed and also keep people updated. We talked about um this area in the 35,000 range. Where is you? Where you be? Right here. So we got to hold this area. You can't hold it you're going lower i guess it's more like 36 i mean it like big round numbers if you blow it up you can see once it failed it was gone to the trend line once the trend line failed it went lower again i'm not really trading bitcoin i give uh my perspective on bitcoin i don't know about the long term with any digital currency because i'm not they don't have the history to trade off of but if you're a long-term bitcoin holder or any digital currency please be careful there is no guarantee there are bubbles galore and everything and even the best stocks get the beat downs at some point. TLT. All right, let's get into the goods of this again, because I, I like to get Bitcoin out of the way because I don't believe it has a much fact, uh, doesn't factor into the markets as much as people would like to assume. We talked about 112 to 113 bottom on the TLT this week. We said, watch this zone down here. It's a retest of lows from 2018. And guess what? It bounced. We bought some at 113.60. We bought some at 112.60s. Yeah, looking pretty good. However, I don't believe in V bottoms. I say this regularly. I don't believe in V bottoms. They happen, but I typically you get retests. And so 
We hit the eight day today. I sold partial of my position. Again, I am looking for a retest at some point. <laughs> when that happens, I don't know. Or it'll be a higher low, but the first bottom is more of a trade than a, I would say, swing. And you have to be aware that you can swing it, but I typically like to sell options on the first bottom and top. Just keep that in mind because then time is in your favor and usually the decay. And if you're right, the price action literally destroys the options. Because if you buy calls and it comes back to you, that's where your premiums get slaughtered. And that's what I try to warn people. Like you got to be very careful picking bottoms with options. And if the VIX is in the 30s and the IB is high, you're overpaying for the options. It's a, it's a long story in itself. Bottom line, look for retests on the TLT. Because this is the thing I'm looking for. Keep in mind, to be bullish the market, I'm looking for bonds to get bought, TLT to go up, the yields to drop. We're looking for oil to peak. And we're looking for the SPY to stabilize. All three of those factors are coming into play right now. Hence why we took some profits short term on some things. But we did not see capitulation in the market. We'll get into that shortly here on the VIX. The dollar, we said, just don't short it. It looks like monthly it's breaking out. And if it is, it's probably going to go up higher. At this point, I don't like to give price targets upside. Because if you notice, I don't. Because I... You just kind of got to read the action. I mean, you like to say zones. Notice I don't say like, oh, it's going to 28.50. No, I say it's going to 113, 112. It's going up to 29 area. That's how you have to look at the market. Because again, you put try to put a ruler and exactness on trading. You don't know the final trades that blow out a position up or down. Keep in mind, the markets are emotional. So TLT, dollar again, I think it's bullish. Now again, why would you buy gold if the dollar is going higher? I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes the dollar and gold don't peg, but at this point, I think the seasonality does not put your favor into the metals. The VIX, <clears throat> we talked about this. And again, you can let me draw this another way too, because I was talking to friends about this. You could draw it like that as well. And what happens? You know, again, this is compressing action. I don't necessarily think the market has bottomed long term by any means. Trust me, I, I, I don't think that at all. But it doesn't mean the market could bounce. We hit some levels on the SPY that we're going to go into right now. So what could that play out near term? Probably CHOP. And CHOP is fine. And again, I mean, the markets can sustain high VIXs for long periods of time. People just they don't remember that. But one of the things I need people to realize, like if you were trading, you have to, when with a high VIX, look at my notes. When the VIX is lower... It's purely directional plays. Like you have to be trading up and down. You have to be aware that like your favorite short could drop 20 points and then also pop 10 or 15. That's just how it works. So you have to trade, trade. You have to trade a trader's market. That's what it is. The SPY. Okay, so here we go. Filled the gap at 394, 395 area. Talked about this near turn being potential bottom. Think about this. <clears throat> Where they're not a bunch of stops, probably at 400, you're going to see the queue, same thing, 300. They got knocked out. And again, in a bear market, you go down slowly, just like you go up slowly in a bull market. So at this point, could there be a bull, a bear market rally? Um, it's always potentially there. Hence why we've taken some off and hedged some things and just we're in a more neutral position. I always warn people, get to neutral when you're unsure. And unneutral means, or neutral means take profits, hedge things get to a place where you're okay if the market goes higher or lower and then play it accordingly because again if you want to play some ups like we will we'll talk about mosaic <clears throat> taking off the xop stuff drip some of it leaving a core position got still my long-term apple and the q shorts but i'm at a more neutral position versus i was much more short and leveraged yesterday and the day before going into this because why we thought it was going to fail ah oh, so at this point Knock the stops at 400, chopping. We'll see what happens. CPI is tomorrow. Everyone's getting excited about it. Probably going to be a nothing burger. But again, I, I, I am just fine with the market bouncing. And it doesn't have to be a strong bounce. Just play it up. Like I can buy stocks and roll up my stops. Q, same thing. We hit my zones. You can see it here. It's an, I'm not drawing these, making these up. I mean, these are on my trading computer. I'm putting them on here. Where do we think next? I mean, it probably should bounce. You knocked all the stops at 300. You're kind of at the channel low. You're at the support zone. You can see it's support in the past. What next? I mean, if it's a bear market, it should rally pretty strong and then smoothly correct down again. We'll see. I mean, the market's not out of the woods yet. 
please people who are just long-term bullish i'm like you guys don't realize what's coming you don't know what's coming iwm again the laggard of laggards it's this this is ugly but we're at places that get me interested you can see we're back at the uh, old 2000 and was it 2000 and what highs 2018 highs don't be surprised you bounce there I mean, this thing has come back from 250 down to 180. You do the math. That's a big move. Might take weeks to digest and bounce. Just keep that in mind, okay? You just I always say this. The more you're up, the more, the less you own. So if you're shorting the IWM, you should be taking profits. Shouldn't be leveraging it bigger. Let's get into gold because I feel like I have... People who know me and that heart know that like my fondness for gold, metal, silver, miners is strong. It's I've been trading it for a long time. I know how this game gets played. Q2 seasonality for metals is just absolutely garbage. I mean, watch previous videos. I don't want to review it again and again and again. You either check for yourself or just don't listen to me. Fine, ignore me. We're at the 200 day. <clears throat> I said that we needed to hold like the 174 area break. Now you're at the 200 day. You're at the next... I mean, if you, if you stretch this across, you can see it's the next support zone. Unfortunately, I don't have faith in it. And people don't realize that gold can go nowhere for a long time. Like, this is a monster cup and handle. What if the handle takes years to play out? I mean, it it is 2020. It's now 2022. Keep in mind, in 2000 to 2003, gold did the same thing. It played this game right before it went absolutely bonkers based out i mean i don't mind that i mean i'm a student of history i mean i'm not getting excited about gold tomorrow i mean picture the people on twitter and same with the uranium folks and you're literally promising certainty that you have to buy now and they've been saying that for weeks and weeks and weeks and what has happened it just goes lower lower and lower and i'm just telling you one of the tells i'm looking for is those people to stop posting and quit just again like admit they're wrong at the lows that's because again that's what emotions do it gets you to buy a high sell low and let the q2 play out because guess what if april in, in, window dressing if you've not watched my video about window dressing and the end of quarter games if gold closes near the lows in may and june it's gonna retest at worst at the end of june before it goes higher because the end of quarter markup and markdown is a real thing and something that's lagging for a quarter gets sold at the end of the quarter this is the beginning. This is April. This is where we're at now. This is not going to be a mark up at the end of the quarter. Same with silver. I'm just telling folks, please, this is my no brainer buy zone, but I'm not even interested. And it just because it's not going to go anywhere. Technically, it's back at the lows. I get it. You want to be a hero? Go ahead. I mean, I'm just, I, there is always opportunity cost to trading. I'm just telling you, like, do you want to buy something that's going to go nowhere? Or do you want to short and buy other names that will move? I hope you realize that that's the thing you're trading against is yourself. GDX, same thing. We said if it doesn't hold the 200 day, going back to 2930. I'm going to roll through the miners quickly because, again, I mean, they all look very attractive here. But I know the seasonality. I know the timing. I just don't want to touch it. Hey, look at that. Hit our trend line on the GDXJ. Again, this stuff probably should all bounce. But if it doesn't, I don't... I mean, again, there's other names out there that I like better near-term. I love gold long-term, but I don't want to be stuck in something that doesn't move. That is the worst. The market's rising. I mean, again, gold's making lower lows as the SPY is bo bottoming. Problem. Same thing, AG. I mean, this looks so juicy. But come to me. Come to me in the five or sixes on AG. You will see me slam the internet with calls to buy this stuff. AEM said in the low 40s, mid 40s, whatever. Uh, pass. Or no, this is one I did buy today. And the only reason why I bought it is because it's so cheap and I can afford to hold it. I bought some at 570. I've got alarms down here at 5, like 15. I like this company long run because it just IPO'd and it's been basing. It will get bought out or it's about to go on a KL type run. Again, I buy a couple thousand shares, stuff this in my IRA. I don't care. I'm not trying to get rich off of it. But I am no I do know that I it's it's probably the dumbest play you'll see me post. Oh damn, why don't you just wait? Um, okay. Well it could get bought out. That's how small they are. And if they get bought out, great. And if they don't, 
It's not like I'm like every person on Twitter going, buy, 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 buy. No, I'm, I'm buying the lows. It's my blue box. I mean, it's technically where I want to buy. If it's technically where I want to buy, then I buy it. And if I'm wrong, I am wrong. Pass, same thing. Talked about the low 20s. It's here. I just don't want it. I just don't. And folks are, who are my gold friends are like, you're a trader. You're not, you're not, you're not a real diamond hands trader for metals. And it's like, no, I don't have diamond hands or love for anything that doesn't make me money. Because again, at times, gold is not the trade. Silver is not the trade. If you can't recognize that, then you need to learn how to actually trade. Because there are times where, guess what? The market does not go in your favor 365 days a year. Or whatever trading day is their amount a day in the year. Because of holidays. Stop it. Stop being naive. Stop being an idiot. And stop following the idiots. Again, it's the blind leading the blind saying, always buy. I'm not going to put you in a position to do that. And meaning like... If you follow me or you're learning to be, ed you're educating in education with us, you're learning that you have the brain power to navigate this because you've seen the past. Anyone who says always buy gold has, again, that's just, that's just crazy, man. X, I mean, again, there's a lot of names here in the material space. I'm just like, huh, I'm laying off of technically came back under 30 or 28, 29. I don't want to buy it. It's broken. I want to see it chop out. I want to see 23 area. Valet. Is this making a lower bottom before bouncing? Typically makes a higher high or a lower low before it bounces. Again, I like it in the 13, 14 range. I'm not touching it. CCJ talked about how it looked like it was being bought here on the trend line. I think this has upside. Again, I did not choose to buy it. You'll see what I bought, and that is Mosaic. Why? Why would you buy Mosaic, Dan? Well, let me draw you a picture. Ding. It's at the trend, it's at the trend line. Notice also today, something also technically very special about it. It didn't make a new low today. As the market blew out, it was holding up really, really, really well. You go look at the 10 minute. What do you notice at the close yesterday? Somebody was buying the absolute, you know what, out of this. VPA, there you go. There's an entry signal. We have a two day range. Again, I was buying it down here near 56. 56, 20, 2, 50, 20, 56, 2, 2, 5 is my exact entry point. My stop is now below yesterday's low. Technically, it doesn't look that damaged. I mean, I know people say it is a head and shoulders top. I agree with that. And we warn people. But if it goes from 80 to 56 very quickly, probably due for a bounce. And again, this doesn't look technically damaged like some of these other materials names. So I think because this has been a leader. You can say the same thing about XOP. I mean, trust me, I'm not naive to the action in my wants and thoughts. I'm trying to be very thorough. This is taking a bigger bath. I think it's not technically as broken. I mean, you can see it again with CF. They all look like they're bottoming down here. For how long of a run? I don't know. But you had the same thing. Here's your... Hopefully you can see this. That's the best way to draw it. Here's a little support zone. Holding. If it's breaking, Mosaic should follow. If it's not, it's holding, it's great. Let's get into CF right here real quick. And just, again, watch it. Low 90s. I mean, I like it longer term lower, and that's why I'm not going bonkers here buying stocks going long, but I am watching things that are acting technically strong. AMD, technically strong? No, absolutely not. Do for a bounce? Yes. This is a broken chart. This is not a bullish chart, but it is due to bounce. I don't want to buy it. I mean, again, if it comes back to 100 you know what I'm doing. I'm bringing the slam hammer <clears throat> all day on that. Facebook or uh, Apple, same thing. I mean, I'm shorted from up in here in this area. Shorted on the 170 pop after earnings. Now, again, I, I have a partial position. I have a core position that I'm just going to hold on to. And if it goes higher, I will add to my short position. And if it breaks, it's going lower. This looks like a big congestion zone. It's just a matter of time before Apple gets busted. People don't realize that. The market can change, and certain things can go up, and certain things can go down. Facebook, again, we tried to short it. We got stopped out and got back up here to this resistance spot, like to a T, and then whoop, missed it. Again, short these things. Short, please, short every single one of them on a bounce. I mean, I don't have any faith in tech. Roblox, now this is an interesting one because I think it's so cheap it's going to get bought out. I am starting to see volume down here. Keep in mind, let's check out some of the 10-minute action. This open smash, no. Ooh, somebody was buying this at the close. Again, decent volume down here. Starting to expand. If the action, I mean, if I was going to buy something as a tech company that could get bought out, this is what I would buy. 
be safe be safe tesla if you're listening mike walsh i love you man but bro your infinity to hold tesla for the rest of your life as you like to like bet on trends so ironic that it's at the highs i don't hear people talking to me when this thing was in the 30s pre-split i remember we talked about it some of my friends actually did buy it and they're they did great <laughs> they're doing great they can withstand some of the back tests i mean they bought it at 30 pre-split and whatever that is now i don't even want to do the math on that but they did great now you're buying up here this just chart is just man look at all this this is so messy I, again when you have messy charts look at mosaic clean nice and clean very clean tesla choppy sloppy mess why would i even go here like i mean again you could short pop that's all i see all i see is lower highs see lower high lower high lower high lower high see lower low lower low lower low higher low now what i don't know but you better hold 800 that's all there to say <laughs> i just don't get why people go back to the well like the easy money i mean tesla goes on a five thousand percentage run and people just oh i gotta hold it Okie EXPI, uh, getting back at the lows again. This is stuff from the IRA. I like it long term. I know we're doing well, but I always tell people fundamentals don't matter in, a, any, in the market long term. UTHR, holding this 175 area, not bad. This is a trading stock. I think long term it does have potential because, again, it's holding the 20 month. I mean, it just seems to be like this looks like a I'd almost say it feels like the way that Apple's playing, or not Apple, Gold's playing out. Like you, you get up near the range highs, and in a crappy market, it just has to get chopped out. Doesn't necessarily mean it won't, can't go higher, but if the market's not going higher, neither will this thing. But it will show, it's showing relative strength. That's what I'm trying to explain, relative strength. Let's end it on oil, as we always do. Get to the goods. I mean, why is this not up here? U.S. oil, U.S. Oil. One of the things we talked about, oil topping, well, we talked about that. Well, now what? You're at the pennant lows. Does this, this mean it's breaking? I don't know. I Again, one of the things we need to see is oil confirmed down before the market gets more excited. Demand destruction, however, will show that there is deflation short term. Now, when I say deflation, I mean compared to inflation peaking. That's all it is relative. Pulling back, I am still short a core amount position of XOP because I do believe the market will love if oil drops and if market does pop and oil drops, it gets even more excited in the market and it'll all play out in a favor. That's why it's my, again, I'm not really adding to short on text, but I am loving this action. XOP, we day traded this, we swing trade this, we scalped this, we, we did good. Shorted up here, got stopped out, reloaded some of this, got stopped out, went extra big like super size like not medium mac or big mac style anymore because those things have shrunk and then what started taking profits we double bottomed now again i still have my core position because it could always just blow out but do you not believe i went to margin island went huge on this trade and took a lot of the profit near term yeah because technically i still think it's going to fail but on the monthly, I mean, it, it just, it takes its time. You know, time is the, the thing that I think most people can't realize, like wrap around their heads. If oil needs to do a bounce near term, it holds 100 and goes to whatever 100 something and this bounces, where do you think dad's shortened? We shorted this today right by the 50 day. Didn't even get there, short armed it. Keep in mind, it short armed the 20 day previously. Well, again, if I joke and say dad's because I'm, feel like I'm people's parents sometimes when they're asking me questions. And again, watch, watch this zone. I mean, I tell people all the time, like, do not put hard lines on your charts and expect the lines to be perfect. Play zones. Like, look at this bottom. Oh, it was 20 cents below it. Oh, sorry, it broke low. I can't trade it. Eh, you missed out if you would have taken profits. And what did the drip end at? 24.50. Yeah, I mean, it got up to 26 at one point. I mean, we started unloading in the 25s, the 26 range. And guess what? no qualms about rebuying drip but i still have a couple thousand shares that i'm ultimately holding xop stuff i mean i'm not giving up on this trade it's just there's a trend and you have to leverage it and you can either hold it or you can do what i do and you leverage it when you have a trend you don't expect one direction all the time you trade around it and this is another reason why i'm short oil what do we talk about double top double top exxon mobile there you go all right folks there's really not much to say again if you're new to the channel 
please stop by the Discord room. But don't come in here asking me to answer questions like Jim Cramer and go, hey, what do you think of this and this and that? No, come in here, come into the room, ready to learn. Hey, Dan, where do I find this on this topic? Hey, what do you recommend reading here? What do you think I need to do to up my game? That's what I can help you with. If you want me to be Jim Cramer, please don't. Don't don't insult my intelligence. I can't know everything about everything all the time. Your job is to learn how to trade. My job is to just help out, answer questions. Trust me, if you gain experience and learn how to trade, you'll be the one looking out for me some point. I know that. That's the thing. Shared knowledge is great knowledge. Anyway, talk to you later. Hey, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, stop by the Discord room. A link is in the description below. Also, if you'd like to help support more free content, your PayPal link is in the description as well. I appreciate your continued support of the channel.